guys. So I figured I'd come on here today and talk about a few tips um, that have actually helped me study and stay organized throughout nursing school. If you are in nursing school or you've been in nursing school or you know anybody who goes to nursing school or you're thinking about it, um, I think everybody would agree that you have to stay organized and on top of things. If you don't, it's very easy to get left behind, to get overwhelmed, and to just be like, I'm straight. Um, and that's what we don't want. We want to plan ahead so that we are not getting overwhelmed and bogged down with just the commitment and the work that comes with nursing school. So I have a few tips, not many. And like I said, these are things that have worked for me. Um, understand that we are all individuals. So what may work for me may not necessarily work for you. But the, the idea of this is to share things that have worked for me and hopefully they will also work for somebody else so let's get into it step one is to figure out what type of learner you are auditory visual verbal solitary and social you do not have to be one or the other you can be a combination of all of them and understand that this applies to certain situations, specific situations. So for example, this is a perfect example in clinicals. Don't tell me how to do something. Don't just tell me how to do something. Give me the opportunity to do it myself. When we're doing IVs, don't say do this. Like guide me along the way, but allow me the opportunity to do it. Because you telling me is completely different from me actually doing it on a real life person. Um, but when it comes to studying, I am an auditory learner. I am not the type of person who can take down notes. Notes are very time consuming to me. I don't have that time. I work full time and I'm in an accelerated program. So just notes for me is just too time consuming. I am an auditory learner. So what I will do is I will record my lectures pending that I have a good teacher because anybody who's been in school knows that all teachers are not created equally. But if I have a good teacher like I have for pharmacology, I will just record those that lecture and I will listen to it when I'm at the gym. I will listen to it while I'm at work. I will listen to it before I go to bed. Repetition is key for me. So I need to continuously listen to something and then I can grasp the concept. And then I will go to the book for whatever, whatever wasn't covered or things that I didn't necessarily understand. So I am an auditory learner. And I am also a combination of a social and solitary learner. I truly believe that study groups are very, very good and in, in, in essential to surviving nursing school. I cannot stress it enough because without my study buddy, uh, I, I would be far, 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 far behind. Um, I think we keep each other afloat. And it is very important that you find a group who, not for the games, because... If you with a group who all y'all want to do is talk about stuff that's not concerning school, remove yourself from that group. Find people who come in, let's get this job done, let's study so that we can pass and keep it moving. So, I am a solitary learner initially. I need to learn this material by myself. I cannot go into the study group and listen to them talk and then be like, oh, I get it. Unless it's something I already have prior knowledge about and then I'm coming to the group for clarification on something. I cannot go into the group with no prior knowledge and be able to grasp the concept. Now, once I have grasped the concept of whatever I have been studying, then I can become a social learner. So then we bounce and stuff off of each other. So the point is understand what type of learner you are. If you don't, you can be a visual learner trying to learn auditorial. And that's just a waste of time. I, I cannot stress enough. Learn what type of person you are. What works for you may not work for somebody else. And what works for me may not work for you. Um, I know a lot of people love flashcards. For pharmacology, a lot of people use flashcards. That did not help me. Um whatsoever because it's like what if you know about pharmacology you know that damn near all the drugs got the same signs and symptoms so it's just like 
everything just looked the same. Everything just sound like looked like gibberish to me. So I did not do flashcards for pharmacology. What I did do, because I had a wonderful professor, is that I recorded the lectures and I would just continuously listen to them to the point where I knew what she was saying next. And that helped me a lot in pharmacology, a whole lot. So learn what type of learner you are. Identify what type of learner you are. Are you visual? Are you auditory? Are you verbal? Are you a social? Are you a solitary learner? That will help you immensely when it comes time for you to study. It is nothing worse. And I learned this late because I thought that I was a visual learner. Um, because I'm visual and, 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 and a lot of other things. And I would have the beautiful notes with all the cute Sharpie colors and all the highlighted portions and sticky note here. Girl, that did not help me. Like, it was, I was low-key depressed about it because I'm like, dang, like, I like how this looked, but I was not grasping the concept. It wasn't until mid-semester, I'm like, listening to her, and I'm like, okay, this is, this is my vibe. This is how I learn this type of material. So, identify what type of learning. Step number two is that you have to create goals, and you don't... You should not just create any type of goals, but your goals should be, and I'm pretty sure everybody heard of, everybody has heard of this, they should be smart goals. They need to be specific, they need to be measurable, they need to be obtainable, they need to be relevant, and they need to be timely. I feel like that is very important when it comes to studying because if you don't have a set goal, like if you are studying the GI, you can't just be like, oh, I'm gonna study the GI. I mean, obviously you are, but once you break it down, it makes it easier for you to kind of pinpoint exactly what you're focusing on. Set those goals. And you need to have those goals set out before you begin to study. I find that when I go into studying and I say, okay, I'm studying chapter 67, that is the GI, um, it allows me to focus and not just be all over, over the place focusing on several things at once and then at the end of the day still not getting anything done or anything com complete so make sure when you set your goals they make sense they make sense and that they put you in a position to win put you in a position to focus your time wisely it's nothing worse and this happened when we went to the me and betty had went to the library the other day um, last week to study we didn't have a plan we were just like we're gonna study for the final our final was cumulative so what does that mean we didn't even know where we were gonna start and by that by not having those goals set we were just all over the place so just make sure that you set your goals that they're focused that they're specific that they're measurable obtainable um, relevant and in a timely manner so step three, I cannot stress this enough. In order to be organized, you have to plan accordingly. I know, and this relates back to step one, when you're trying to figure out what type of learner you are and applying it to specific situations. Like I said, if I'm building something, putting something together, I'm a visual learner. If I'm studying for something, I'm an auditory learner and a visual learner. If I need to remember something, I need to write it down. I need to visually see it. I know in this day and age with technology, you have all these apps and I'm not knocking them, but you have all these apps where you could just put it in your phone and you can keep it moving. And if that is what works for you, please by all means stick to that. But for me and what type of learner I am, I can't just hear something and remember it. And my phone, I don't know, it just doesn't feel the same. I am like old school, get a paper and a pen and write it down. So I'll kind of show you guys how I, how I organize from the semester. And when I start at the beginning of the semester, I will write down everything that is due on my calendar, all the assignments and clinicals. Um, and then at the beginning of each week on a Sunday, I will write down all my assignments, all my readings, anything that I need to do pertaining to that week so that I don't get caught off guard or I forget anything. I cannot stress enough how important that is. If you are one of those type of people where you can just kind of wing it, by all means, God has blessed you. <laughs> but on this end, I have to, I have to write things down. 
So basically, this is how, this is just the week in April that I had. So basically, how I organize it, and you can organize it however you want to. These are all my readings for each class. These are all my assignments. And then this is just miscellaneous things that I needed to do. These were all my clinicals that I needed to have that I, I took this week. And I'm looking back at that like, girl, I have four clinicals in one week. And I don't I don't know how other schools are. Mine was typically they are, and this is off topic, typically my clinicals were every other week. But we had a really cool instructor. Um, and she was like, if y'all want to knock them all out, by all means do it. And this was a rough month for me. But I definitely appreciated not having to worry about clinicals all throughout the semester. I got them all done within one month. Um, so this was all the clinicals that I needed to have this week. And then this goes back to the planning each, the, the hours that you would use. So usually, typically I stick to three goals. No more than that. Um, because if I do, it just kind of, it it's no point for me because nine times out of ten, that fourth thing is just not going to get done. So I stick to three goals for each day, um, and I give myself an hour to work on each one. Whatever I don't finish gets pushed down to the next day, um, and vice versa. So you can see, I worked three hours on these three assignments. I didn't finish them, so I worked the next day the three hours, and I finished two of them. And then on here, I only had two left, so I knocked one out the way. And at this point, it's only Thursday, and our assignments are due on Sunday. So this is kind of like how I organize things. I also show you how I organize them by month. Um, this quarter, I didn't necessarily really use my monthly calendar. I mean, I put things in, but I didn't use them like that. So this is how I will organize things for the month. Usually, it, it, I think it would be a good idea if you color-coded them because me using all the same color, majority of the same colors, everything kind of runs together. But I would suggest even just looking at this now, um, assignments can be one color, clinicals can be another color, exams can be another color. So you can kind of distinguish from all the, the information that is already on this page. Set time limits for each individual task. So what I would do is that I am not the type of person who can just study, 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 study. I know people who can study 10 hours straight and be good. Shannon is not that person, to be honest. So what I do is I break my study times or even not even just studying, um, completing assignments. I break them into intervals. Um, and I kind of do this with everything in my life. I give myself a set time limit to work out, to edit videos, or to do school stuff. And so, initially, I'll start off with three hours. Because after, usually after the fourth hour, I'm kind of like over it. So, I give myself three hours. I set no more than three goals when it comes to school a day. So, that may be studying, doing an assignment, and whatever else. Maybe miss something miscellaneous. Um, and so how I'll do it is that let's say I start studying at 12 from 12 to one. And I give myself, you can give yourself 30 minutes to an hour interval. So I give myself an hour at one o'clock. I need to stop whatever I, I was doing, but within from 12 to one, I am not on social media. I am not answering phone calls. I am not checking emails. I am specifically focused on whatever task. I have given myself to complete or even just start because you don't necessarily have to complete it. The idea of me doing this is to not get overwhelmed at the end of the week with a whole bunch of stuff that is due. So if I do a little bit every single day, that lessens the load. So that, so like I said, within that hour, you focus on that specific task. Now, the, the second important thing about this is that once that hour hits and you can set yourself an alarm or you just keep paying attention to the time, once that hour hits, you need to stop. You have to give your mind a break. You have to allow it to reset um, so that you can come back and grasp the information or do whatever you need to do for that second hour. I give myself 15 minutes, 15 to 30 minute break. And so what I'll do is I'll go work out. 
I'll go walk around, just go outside and get some good vitamin D. I'll go grab me something to eat. I will call somebody. Um, I don't suggest this, but some people might want to get on social media. I'm not big on social media like that. But I will do something to take my mind away from whatever I was just previously focused on. And then again, you have to be disciplined. Just as you were disciplined within that hour, not answering phone calls, not checking email, not on social media, but specifically focus, focusing on that task, that 15 minutes, do that as well. Once that 15 to 30 minutes hit, stop what you're doing and go back to studying. Turn your phone off, put it on airplane mode, do whatever you have to do. But the idea is to be disciplined enough to get things accomplished in those time frames. I found that this has worked tremendously for me. Um, I can't tell you how many times that by week three, guarantee every quarter, I'm just overwhelmed. I'm over it. I'm ready to get it done and over with. But when I set those time frames and I'll start, I'll start, I will do something every single day uh, until I have nothing to do, which, you know, if you're in nursing school, you always got something to do. But that just helps me lighten my load. Um, I remember one week, that week I was just showing you, I had clinicals that week. Um, and we know these are regular 12-hour shifts. Mind you, I work a full-time job as well. So I, it is essential that I chew, I use my time wisely. And I have found that this works because I have a really short attention span. I have the attention span of a gnat. Like I get easily distracted. So I find that this helps me stay focused. It also helps me when I'm stressed out. Um, and it also helps me when I am unmotivated. When I get towards the end of every single quarter, I am, there is no motivation at all. It never fails. But when I give myself them time intervals, it's like, oh, I don't feel like doing this. But once I once that hour is up, it's like, okay, I did this. And now I can go to the next hour. So I definitely encourage you guys to try that. Like I said, you have to be disciplined. You have to stick to your boundaries. You cannot be on your phone answering. And I understand people have families and kids and stuff like that for emergencies, obviously. But just playing around on your phone, just checking emails, just to check an email, just to go see what, who doing on what social media. Like, no, you have to stick to whatever time frame you have given yourself. 30 minutes to an hour, or if you, you want to do two hours straight or three hours straight, the point is, Figure out what works for you. I know that I cannot study three hours straight with no break in between. I need to give myself an hour here, an hour here, and an hour there. And in between those hours, I need breaks. But figure out what works for you. Set boundaries, set time limits, and get stuff done. Step four is to test yourself frequently. What I like to do is after I've learned a topic, like I've went over it I like to go back and go over questions whether they be in the book um, whether it be on Quizlet um, RM mentor those are just a few apps that I use I like to go back and look at those specific topics and test myself on the knowledge that I've just learned um, I know a lot of people like to look at questions and look over rationale that helps them grasp whatever they were learning and that also helps me as well so like I said, test yourself frequently. Um, what we also like to do, me and Betty, is we just like to throw out words and bounce, bounce them off of each other. So she might, we might be talking about the health, the, um, what what is included in an assessment of the abdomen. Right off back, you know that the normal assessment that you would do with every other body part is not the same when you do the abdomen inspection, auscultation, percussion, then palpation. You know the palpation is down last because you never know what might be going on there. You might press a little bit too hard and then you rupture the appendix and that's what you don't want to do. So just kind of things like that. We throw out a word or we throw out a phrase or we throw out a topic and we just spill everything that we know about that topic. Um, I cannot stress enough that repetition is key. I think a lot of us on here, and maybe you are a genius. I am not a genius. I really have to work to understand the material that I am learning because I am not, I've never been a fan of school in the way that they teach people. I, I think, especially in grade school, they clump you all in one class and you 
teach you all one style of learning and they don't take into account that we are individuals and we have different learning styles we comprehend things differently. So I'm not a big fan of the sit in a lecture. I'm not even a big fan of just sitting on a computer. I am a hands-on learner. When I am in clinical, I will tell whoever my nurse I'm assigned to, I will say, listen, do not tell me how to do stuff. Allow me to do it. You telling me how to do an IV, um, you telling me how to do a glucose check, that means nothing to me if I cannot do it myself. So I always say, you know, do you mind allowing me to do this as you direct me through it? Otherwise, I'll just be like, okay, oh, you do that? Okay, all right. And then when it's time for me to do it, I don't know how to do it. So, um, what was I even talking about? <laughs> I think it is very important that you test yourself. Test yourself, um often after you've learned a, a, a portion of material go over it in your mind go look at also use all of your resources i don't just use my books i use like i said i use quizlet i use rm mentor i use pigmonic i use my classmates i use whatever is going to help me grasp the material i just don't stick to one thing and that's what works for me because what may be on one study guide may not even be in the book or she might have not you know my teacher may have not discussed it in the lecture what i have noticed is that some of my teachers they might it might be something on the test that they didn't discuss in class and their response is always your responsibility is to read the book and so you got to cover all the bases because you can't just rely on your teacher or just rely on a study guide or rely on quizlet or whatever else it may be you want to cover all bases so my suggestion is to test yourself frequently whether that be with your classmates or looking at questions and rationales to understand the material so guys those were my tips i really hope that they were useful they were sound they were something that you know you all can see yourself doing um and that they made sense like I said, this is what I felt like has helped me thus far in nursing school. And I didn't kind of learn this right away. Mind you, I have been out of school. I graduated from Michigan State in 2013, maybe, or 2012. 2012, so 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I've been out of, or 17, I started school in 2017. So I've been out of school for four years. And my learning style when i was an undergraduate is definitely not the same learning style that i have now um and i guess i didn't think about that i wasn't thinking like oh girl you know you're about to start school again school again you need to figure out what your learning style is i didn't i didn't figure that out until i was probably into my third or fourth quarter um and so my goal is we all in this together listen at the end of the day we all want to be nurses. So if I can help y'all, help me, help you, help myself, we good. So thanks guys for watching and I will talk to you guys next time.